Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, we are flipping some thrifted items and upcycling them and giving them some new life. Fortunately, here in LA, I'm able to go thrifting still, but I know a lot of you guys are unable to, so I hope that this video gives you some inspiration on things that you can do to upcycle things that you already have at home. So you could totally take these techniques and flip old decor that you might have laying around, or maybe head on over to places like Facebook Marketplace or Etsy and go thrifting there. I find that those are two really great sources for you to go thrifting online so you can be safe at home but still find some hidden treasures. Also, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who entered my 75,000 subscriber giveaway. I can't believe we're almost at 80,000 at the time of this recording. I really love reading through everyone's answers and seeing what you guys wanted to DIY this year. The community here on this channel is just so creative and I want to thank you guys all so much for your support. I also want to give a big congratulations to the winner of the giveaway. I will put their comment here on the screen Green. They've been contacted and I'm super thankful that I'm able to give back to you guys even if it's just a little giveaway And if you didn't win this time, there will be more in the future So be sure to stay tuned both of these products are actually inspired by Urban Outfitters And I think they have such a fun vibe to them. So I think you guys are going to love them I really love all the things that they carry But I know that I can make it for cheaper from items at the thrift store. So that's exactly what I did today Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the first project Hello from voiceover Tina. So first on the chopping block is this funky green vase. I honestly feel like this vase color is kind of trendy right now, but you guys already know that I'm all about my neutrals and warm tones. So we're gonna give this a little bit of a makeover. First things first, we're gonna give this a good sanding. The finish on this is very glossy and there are a few imperfections. So I'm smoothing it down as best as I can with some rough sandpaper. Next, we're gonna create some little arms by creating a long coil with polymer clay. I was very inspired by this piece from Urban Outfitters and since the neck of this vase is very skinny, I thought it'd be perfect to recreate this piece. Now I'm cutting off a small section of it and I'm just measuring it up against the vase to see if it fits. I wanted it to be a little bit bigger so I cut on another piece that was longer and this fit it perfectly. From there I used that piece to cut out three more pieces at the same length. And I know the original vase has three sets of these handles but since the one that I have isn't as large, I thought it would be overwhelming so I just did two sets. And from there, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and mold it to the shape of the vase. Usually, I like to use something like the Sculpey Bacon Bond, which is a great adhesive to use in the oven, but I wanted to try a different method in case you guys don't have that or don't want to buy it so that you can recreate this project with things that you already have at home. Now I'm taking some basic rubbing alcohol and this is gonna help smooth everything out. This is a great little hack that I tried out last week. I found that it worked really well, especially if you have things like little fingerprints or marks or even pieces of dust or fibers on the clay. And now I'm just gonna bake that on its side according to the instructions for 15 minutes at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. After taking it out of the oven and letting it cool down completely, you'll see that the handles are gonna slip right off since we did not glue it on during the baking process. So I just set those aside and repeated the process of creating and baking the handles again to create our second set of handles. Alright, so now we have all four of our handles and I'm just using some E6000 glue to attach it to the vase. And you'll notice that the handles perfectly fit onto the vase's shape since we baked it onto the vase. And this is perfect for gluing on after the baking process and creates a very seamless edge. So I'm going to let that sit overnight while the glue cures completely. After leaving it overnight, I'm going to take off the tape and our handles are ready to go. If you notice any excess glue, you could totally just remove it with a pair of tweezers like I am here. So I noticed there was a tiny gap between the handles and the vase, so I wanted to try out this new technique. I'm using some of this lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree and I had to add a little bit of water in it just because mine was dried out and crumbly. So adding in some water is really going to help it spread better. So I just used a tiny bit to fill in the gaps and wherever else I think it needed it. If you plan to use baking soda paint, you could probably skip this step since the paint is really thick, it does a great job of covering up those gaps. I've done that in the past and it works perfectly, but since I'm using spray paint this time around, I wanted this to be as smooth as possible. Once 
Once that dries down, you can get off some of the excess spackle by using a damp paper towel or a cloth to wipe it all away. And if you notice any more roughness, you can go ahead and sand it down, but I found that mine was A-OK. -okay. So next, I'm using this color called Heirloom White by Rust-Oleum. It's a nice off-white color, and I think it's going to be perfect for this vase. I gave it two even coats, and I got pretty good coverage with it. The original piece from Urban Outfitters had some black speckling on it, so I used a watered-down acrylic to do this very lightly. I tried my best not to get any vertical splatter lines by tapping it perpendicular to the vase, and I'm doing this very carefully all around the vase. Adding in speckling is also a really great way to mask any imperfections, so if you're working on any pieces that have grooves and dips in them, this is a great way to hide that. To seal everything in, I'm using a glossy top coat and I gave that two even coats. I'm loving how this vase turned out. With a few simple upgrades, we were able to transform this thrifted item into a trendy modern piece. I hope these tips help you create your own unique pieces for a fraction of the price. Right before I left the thrift store, I found this glass tea light candle holder, which is actually an item I've been looking for. I really like the simple shape of it, so the first thing I'm doing is just sanding it down to prep for spray paint, and I'm using a coarse sandpaper at 80 grit. So now I'm going to use the same spray paint from before in that heirloom white color, and I'm giving it two even coats. Make sure that you let this dry overnight, otherwise you might run into issues, which you guys will see later, but I will teach you how to fix them. So now I'm going to work on the design and I'm using these shipping labels that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to draw small Matisse inspired cutout shapes. So you'll see that I'm creating very organic looking shapes that kind of resemble flowers or leaves. There really is no right or wrong way to do this and I also made little arches. Alright, so now that everything's drawn out, I went ahead and cut them with an X-Acto knife and I also tried using scissors and I think both of these methods worked pretty well. And fun fact you guys, did you know that Henri Matisse actually started doing these after his health declined? He couldn't really paint like he used to anymore. He would actually paint paper with colors and then cut out the shapes and then glue them to create artwork. And Matisse was actually the first to do this and created a new art medium that we see today as these paper cutouts. Learning the history behind this is so cool because it was kind of a happy little accident, as Bob Ross would call it. And it's really awesome because I've noticed that these are popping up everywhere again. They are super on trend. And it's actually what inspired the largest piece in my living room gallery wall, and I'm absolutely loving this trend. Now that everything's cut out, it's ready to be placed onto our little tea light holder. So I'm just removing the backing and sticking these on in a random pattern, making some of them wrap around the edges, and just having fun with the placement. Now that everything's covered, it's time to spray paint again and I'm using this gorgeous sagey green color. It's called Oregano by Rust-Oleum and I'm going to lightly give this a coat of paint. Essentially, our little stickers are going to act as decals to black out our shapes, so the main color of the holder is going to be green and then the shapes are going to be in white, but feel free to use whatever colors you would like. This only took me two coats and I made sure that it was dry in between coats. Alright, so it's time to peel, and honestly, I was pretty nervous for this next step in case anything bled through or the paint underneath came off. I've never done a project like this before, so to my surprise, this came off pretty cleanly. However, you'll notice that there's a spot that pulled some of that paint off, and that's just because I was impatient and I didn't wait a full day for the white to dry. So please learn from my mistakes and ensure that it has dried and cured completely before sticking on the stickers. Doing this technique gives us a fun color block look and overall I'm really happy with the outcome. To fix the little spot, I just sprayed that same color into a little container and then I used my paintbrush to dab some paint onto it and that covered it nicely. And the last thing we need to do is to give this a nice clear coat in a glossy finish for some shine. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty obsessed with this piece. We were able to create such a beautiful design using such a simple technique. This is so on trend and totally something that I would see at Urban Outfitters. I'm super happy with the end result and I hope you guys feel inspired to try out this technique because I think it just looks so gorgeous. 
So those were the projects for today's video. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I also am interested to hear if you guys have tried any of those techniques that I tried out today. I love how both of them came out, but I think I really like the tea light holder just because it was something that I almost passed in the store. I saw it last minute and I knew I had to grab it because I've been eyeing something similar and I'm really, really happy with how the one that I made turned out. Every time I go to the thrift store, I try to find bigger items to flip, but I have been having the worst luck ever. So I might have to go onto Facebook Marketplace to find something good. I don't really have any more room in my apartment to put things, but I definitely have space on my balcony. So if I find something, I definitely want to flip it in a future video. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you recreate any of the projects from today's video or any of my previous video, make sure that you tag me on Instagram so that I could see it and like it and give it some love. You guys are killing it. I love seeing all the different reels that you're also tagging me in and I will put a few here on the screen. They're seriously the best notifications that I get. So please keep them coming. And if you guys like today's video, make sure that you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. As always, thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay inspired and I will see you in the next one. Bye.